Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Well, uh, you're, you're asking, where is Pastor Mauricio? He's not here. I am here. Uh, yeah, are you excited? Thank you for the 30 of you. <laughs> no, uh, praise God, he is opening doors and, uh, for Elevate, and uh, our daughter and Mauricio, they are actually in uh, Orange County. They're at Influence Church. Alexis had the opportunity to be co-leading this morning uh, worship. So God is doing great things, and we're excited. I'm excited today to get to share with you uh, the, the message today, and I believe truly it's an honor to be able to speak with you this morning. I pray that you open your ears to hear what God wants to say, that you open your eyes to hear what God wants to show you, and that you open your heart, and that what I'm about to tell you, I believe it's a word from heaven. It's a word from you if you're watching us on live stream, and I believe that you're going to be blessed. So I want you to take out your papers, your notebooks, your whatever devices, and I want you to take notes. Today we're going to work, yeah? Are you okay with that? Okay, so let us go to Matthew 7-7. Seven, seven. And every, today is the set part two, so we're talking about get your ship together. Okay, I do have an accent. You know that I have an accent, right? <laughs> Just in case you're hearing, you're hearing a T instead of a P for Paul. Um, I encourage myself, so I always say, Virginia, you have an exotic accent. It's not exotic, but you know you have to encourage yourself. So in case you hear another word, it is ship, okay? <laughs> Just write a P on your notes. Okay, so we have a new acronym. I was praying to the Lord, and I said, what will be an acronym? Because I just, wanna, I don't, just don't want to throw letters and say, hey, let's just say these things. But we're going to go somewhere with the acronym. So S is for seek. Say S is for seek. You're doing good. So the verse for that one is Matthew 7, 7, and it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. In order to seek, we need to seek, right? Another word that I thought that we should use so you can remember is I want you to seek. If you want to own your own ship, if you want to own your own life, you need to seek not only God, but you need to seek and you, be need, and you need to become a snoop. Say, become a snoop. Okay, that's good. I want you to snoop around. Become a snoop doggy dog. No. <laughs> but I want you to snoop. Snoop in a sense that you're going to find out, not snooping on people, okay? Because we use the word snooping for other people. No, this is to snoop on yourself. We're going to find out why you are where you are, where your ship is, where it is. How did you get there? How, why, when, who? We're going to put all that together. And I believe that you're going to be blessed. So if you want to know where you are in life, you need to know your current position. Many, many times you want to move to, uh, we already have plans. I have plans for 2020, and we start declaring wonderful things, but yet you don't know where you are today in life. You find yourself confused, you find yourself trouble, or maybe you find yourself happy. Hey, if you're happy and content, awesome, because that means you still need to know how did you get to this place? If I'm content, I need to trace back where, how did I get here? Because in order to move forward, then you will know exactly how to move forward and how to live the preferred picture that God has for you. So you're going to snoop around. Write it down. I'm going to snoop around on myself. H is for hope. There is no way to seek and to, and to snoop around on your own self in your own life if we don't have hope. So everything that I'm going to talk to you this morning, I want you to know that is based on the word of God. It's from the foundation that we should be reading the word of God, right? That we should be praying 
I want you to know that as I continue to speak, I want you to know who your God is and whose you are, that we have and we serve a God of the impossible. We serve a God who is interested in your well-being. We serve a God that wants to see you made whole. You serve a God that wants to see you prosper. So have that in mind while I continue to share with you. Is that okay? Awesome. So we're going to do this snooping around, this seeking with hope. And the verse is Jeremiah 29, 11. And he says this, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Do you really know the thoughts of God about you? Just think about it right now. Do you know the thoughts that God has about you right now? Not when you're good, not when everything is going well, but maybe not everything is going well right now. But do you know the thoughts that God has about you? Well, let me tell you, his thoughts are always good. My thoughts about myself, they're not always good. And let's just be real, right? We're going to tell it like it is. And because my husband is not here, I'm going to sing you a song. <laughs> and it goes like this. This is for you, babe. <laughs> Tell it like it is. You remember the song? <laughs> he was a cholo, so I heard, I heard those songs. <laughs> Tell it like it is. Don't be afraid. Let your conscience be your guide. No one knows this song. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That is where my daughter gets the gift, <laughs> as you can tell. So we're going to tell it like it is. Because in order to know where we are, we need to tell it like it is, right? Just because we're going to tell it like it is, that doesn't mean that we're going to get stuck there. Oh, my gosh, it's so sad. No, we just need to tell it like it is because we want to go further with God. We want to walk in the plans of God. We want to walk in the future that God has for us. But in order to do that, you have to be honest with yourself. You have to be brutally honest and vulnerable with yourself in order to know where you are right now. Letter I. I'm using fancy words today. It's called integrate. Say integrate. Do you know what that means? Nobody knows. Okay, that's not. Who said that? What did you say? Awesome. Exactly. <laughs> ah, I love it. This is how we do it. It's to be made whole. After all, salvation, that's what it means. We just didn't get a ticket, like the ticket that we offer when you, it's your first time. Actually, you get a ticket. And if you want to know a little bit of fun facts about me, I'm colorblind. So I still don't see that as a golden ticket. To me, it's a black ticket. But, hey, everybody says that it's gold, so I'm going to take it as gold. However, so when we come to the Lord and we give our lives to Jesus, it's, we think it's like you won the lottery, right? You won this ticket, and you're like, oh. I'm going to live in eternity with, in, you know, in heaven with Jesus. And I am very, uh, very uh, creative. I want you to know that I'm very creative. I already set my request to heaven. I already know where I want to live in heaven. You know, you could dream, right? I was like, you know, Lord, I don't know how to swim on this earth. And yes, I'm going to learn. But, but I already put, uh, put my request. And my request is that what I, I want to live by the sea. Glister is this crystal clear sea, right? Can you imagine? And I want my cottage. I don't want a big mansion. If he wants to give it to me, okay, but I want a cottage. And I said, I want my neighbors. I want uh, David to be around there. I want Paul. I want to talk to Paul. I want to talk to Peter. You know, Peter was always talking, this crap all over the place. Remember Peter? He talks on crap. You know, crap is not a bad word, okay? <laughs> Let's just, just, just. Let's put it on the table. It's not a bad word. Life is crappy sometimes, but we have Jesus, okay? So that's the good news. <laughs> so I thought, okay, so I want to, you know, like conversate with them. I want to talk to Timothy because Timothy was always so timid and he was so fearful. So I relate to Timothy. So I'm like, Yo, so I'm already thinking like that, right? But, but God just doesn't want us just to dream about heaven and eternity. He wants us to set our mind on eternity, which means, you know what? If I'm setting my mind on eternity, that's my destination, then I need to know how am I going to get there. It's not a ticket to heaven and live like hell while we're here, right? 
Because many of us, that's what happens. I have a ticket, and we're so excited, going to heaven, living like hell, right? That's not his purpose. That's not his plan. His plan is that on this life, while we encounter trials and problems and tribulations, he says, you know what? And I think it's in John 16, 33. He says, you know what? Do not fear. Do not be overcome by all this because I'm going to tell you that in this life, you're going to encounter a lot of things. You're going to have problems, trials. You're going to suffer. You know, he, he tells you all of these things because if you study it, it means like, oh, my God, I didn't sign up for this crappy life. No, you didn't sign up for it. But life, we live in a fallen world. So it comes with it. But he, God will never give props to just to the enemy. But he says, but it's okay. He says, but hey. He said, be of good cheer. Take heart. Do you know the word take heart means, okay, be completely whole, knowing that I have overcome for you. So he already overcame everything that you're going through right now. Guess what? He overcame already. Everything that uh, you will overcome in the future, he already did it. So you're in good hands. So say integrate. Okay, that for that I have Thessalonians 5.23 and 24. It says, may God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole. Put you together. Do you know that he wants you put you together? So we're, we're talking about get your ship together. He says, hey, I actually want you to put, I want to put you together. And he says, I want you to make sure that you know this about me. He says, he's a holy God and he wants you to be holy. And don't confuse holiness. People think holiness is, is something that is not. Holiness is the presence of God that you and I carry. Holiness is the position that we have been given. And many times we look at our lives and you say, but hey, I'm not holy. Oh, yes, you are, my friend. If you're in Jesus, you are holy. I'm not saying pure. People confuse pureness with, uh, you know, sometimes I dislike when people say, oh, my God, that person is so holy and so pure. Oh, shut up. You don't even know them. <laughs> you don't even know them. Oh, it's because they do A, B, C. And, no, it's not what you do. It's who you are. Amen. And it's not based on how well you perform, how well you speak. No, it's based on the character of Jesus Christ. I want to walk in holiness because my father says that I'm holy. His son is holy, therefore I am holy. And he is whole, therefore I want to be whole. Are we good? Okay, awesome. Those who are not used to me, come on Wednesdays. We have a lot of fun. I, I sing a lot of songs, and it's fun. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Okay, so where was I? It says that he wants to make uh, holy and whole, put you together, spirit, what? Soul and body. We're like a three-legged stool. Like, can you picture a three-legged stool? Right? No one can picture it? Help me. Come on. It's like that. One leg, two legs, three legs, right? <laughs> Oh, my gosh, you guys are amazing. Okay, so this is what we do. This is what we do, my friends. We just focus on one leg. Oh, but we went balance in life. Have you ever heard people like, how do you get balance? I'm trying to balance my family life. But you know what? You're trying to balance the wrong things. If you want to balance yourself, hey, you need to work on yourself. You're your own ship, your own stool, okay? And then sometimes I feel like we're working on one and we're so out of alignment and so unbalanced because we cut in one, we shave in one. I'm just going to focus on my physical, on my fitness. I just want God. I know that God wants me whole and healed. So I'm just going to focus on what's here in this vessel. And then you forget what? You forget your emotions, your thoughts. And I think a lot of us, the world and the church, we are afraid of emotions. And I'll prove it to you. Don't lose, don't lose yourself with me. P is, did I finish that? No, no, because it's, it's a good scripture. Okay, spirit, soul, and body. Write it down. And keep you fit for what? For the coming of our master, Jesus Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable. Do you know that the ones that are not dependable is us? He is so dependable. And he says, if he said it, he'll do it. 
And many times we're like, I know he said it. I know that he wants me to get my ship together. But I don't know if he's going to help me. I don't know if he's with me. Well, according to the word, he is dependable in whatever he says he is going to do. P is for P. No, just kidding. I was just wanting to see if you are awake and paying attention. P is for purpose. Say purpose. You and I have been given a purpose on this earth, and that's to give hope. You're like, what? My purpose is to give hope? I don't even have hope myself. Oh, yes, you do. You might not feel the hope, but our hope has a name. It's not a feeling. Our hope has an essence, and that hope is Jesus Christ. You and I have been given a purpose, and that is to give life to the lifeless. We, you and I have been given a, uh, a purpose, and that is to share the good news of heaven, the good news of Jesus. And sometimes it's so hard to share the good news because you find yourself really with a lot of bad news in your life. But I'm going to tell you, as I, was, as I was studying all this, and I'm going to give you the scripture, Psalms 52, 2 and 3. Hurry up. You're making me late. I will cry to God most high, who accomplishes all things on my behalf. For he completes my purpose in his plan. He's not going to complete his purpose in your plan. He's going to complete his purpose, complete his purpose in his plan. So if your plan is not working, it's because maybe, just maybe, you are in your own plan. Just maybe. Many times, where are you, God? Well, maybe you're lost, my friend. I have been lost. You're like, how is that? Can a pastor be lost? Oh, heck yeah. we made of flesh and blood. We just have a different calling. But you can lose yourself. You can completely drift from heaven, com completely drift from the things of God, even without knowing. And then you're questioning, what happened with the plan that God has for you? But I have good news for you. He said, he will send from heaven and save me. He called to account, he calls to account him who tramples me down. So you know what? You don't have to worry about who's trampling you down, who's stripping you off, who's stripping, doing all that. Don't trip about the tripper. <laughs> Seriously. He says, I'm going to take account, make account on the one who's trampling you down. And the, and the word that says, say la. Do you know what that means? To pause, to meditate, chew it, and digest it. See, I just give you a Hebrew lesson. <laughs> Say la. Right? That means I know he is with me. He has a plan. And then he says, God will send out his loving kindness and his truth. And as I was studying, I thought, okay, so we're, we're talking about getting our ship together, right? Which means get, get your life together. And so I came across this. I, I am a researcher by, by nature. Uh, do you know that I'm a researcher? I do have a partner. For those who didn't know, I partner with Google. <laughs> so good. Google is so good. Uh, so Google and I do a lot of work together. And so I was like, okay, so I want to learn about navigation. I am I'm very intrigued about, okay, if I'm going to talk about ships, I want to know everything about ships. And so I came up about this term. And it says in navigation, there's a term called debt reckoning. Have you heard of the term debt reckoning? Some of you have. We're going to put it there. And this is what it means. This is in terms of navigation, right? And it means is the process of calculating one's current position by using a previously determined position or fix and advancing that position based upon no known or estimated speeds over elapsed time in course. You're like, what the hell did you just say? <laughs> the word hell is not bad. Why? Because there is a hell. Right? So do not tell me later on, why are you saying help? You say crap. No, just erase it. Just erase it. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Well, I did my own thing, and I'm going to tell you what I did. We're going to have class today. And if we can put the, um, the graphic that I found. Okay, this is literally what it means to do a dead reckoning in navigation. So if you can see the star, maybe you can't see the star, huh? 
Okay, praise Jesus. Thank you, CJ. I'm just going to push this just a little bit. Okay, this is the initial position. Okay, this is the point of origin. And then I'm going to travel up to here. And this is where you are, right? Because you're the ship. You find yourself here, but in order to charter a new course, in order to advance to my future, I want to, it's like saying, hey, I want an amazing 2020, right? We're already like talking about 2020, 2021. And then you find yourself here, and now that's my estimated position that I want to go that way. But guess what? If I don't go back to the original position, I cannot. There's no way to chart a new course to your estimated destination. So I'm out, now I'm going to tell it in my own words. Thank you. Are you ready? We're going to do our own reckoning. And I'm going to tell you, okay, I don't want to block you. This is in my own words. Dead reckoning for you and I. It means is the process of calculating where you are to do that, you have to know where you have been and the factors that influence how you got to where you are now. Right? Have you heard people always say, uh, well, God wants you to, to, he wants you to look forward. Don't look back. Get over it. Well, the thought is very beautiful. Beautiful thought. Amazing. But according to navigation, according for us to move forward, we have to go back to the point of origin. So l let me just start here. Okay, this is my point, origin. This is my destination. This is my current position. And I'm already thinking about 2020. And this is where I want to go. This is my desire destination. But wait a minute. According to the re reckoning, we're going to do our own reckoning. And when you do your own reckoning, it feels like wreckage. Can I tell you that? It's crappy. It feels like, I, I don't want to go back here. So I'm just going to take, okay, let's just, we're going to do this interactive, right? Let's say, how do you, how are you? How are you doing in your current position? Give me some emotions. Where are you right now? Or pretend, where, where do you know your friend is at? You know what I mean? <laughs> a friend at work, wink, wink. Oh, your mom, your dad, someone. Can you tell me something? Scared. You're scared. I find myself. I find myself hopeless. One more. Discourage. Okay, hopeless is kind of discouraged. Let's go. Let, let us dig deep. Angry. You're angry. Pissed off, right? <laughs> I'm going deeper. We're going deeper. If you don't know how to swim, get some floaties. Okay. Okay, this is where I'm at, right? And, and you're just being honest. So you, and I'm going to tell you, you cannot do this without inviting the help of the Holy Spirit. Okay. You can't because it will wreck you. We're going to do a reckoning, which means a narrative. It means... It means a narrated an account of a story, right? So, according to this, it says that I need to go back. Who likes to go back? The only way we like to look back is when we're driving, right? And even that, we're like, like, you know, I think we're dramatized about looking back. No, you don't look back. Like, no, you look back. A car is about to hit you. It doesn't mean drive like that, but hey, at least look at your rear view mirror, right? So I'm here.
because I'm going to be brutally honest. This is where I'm at, okay? So let's say this is me. Let's pretend, right, because you don't want to pretend. So let's pretend this is my life, and this is actually when I started the church in 2010, right? Shout, right? <laughs> and so this was my, my trajectory, right, like this. Like, and I was like this, you know. And then, right? I'm not going to tell you what I was feeling there. Right? So, okay, this was this one very good. But I find myself here, and I'm going to say that I'm going to take all the ones that you gave me. I find myself angry. I find myself hopeless, and I find myself scared. But yet, I am wishing, and I am praying for an amazing future that actually already God gave it to me. So, but my hope in my future destination, let's start with something that I like. Paris. Just kidding. No. No. Just easy. So what would be something good? Money. What? Did you say milk? Oh, I was like, oh, you can buy milk. I can give that to you. Hey, I was like, but if that's where you want to start, I'll give you the milk. Okay, health. Okay, let's go higher than that. I want you to, what? Faith. Faith has been given to you. Fame? You want fame. Okay, so you want success, right? See, I'm helping you. Fame. That's fleeing. Success will stay. Okay, what else? Happiness. Happiness. That's a good one. And I hope I'm spelling this correctly because I have a unique uh, problem with letters. You have to encourage yourself. Okay, so, so here I am. Okay, I am angry, I'm hopeless, I'm scared, but yet I'm expecting to have hell, success, and happiness. How does that make sense? Right? So even in the, in the graphic or in the diagram that we show, it says error. Because you're not going to arrive there unless I go back. How did I get here? How did you get to where you are right now? And I'm going to tell you that it's not easy. I'm going to tell you that in the last two years, I've been in a very difficult place, but I'm also going to tell you that I've been doing my own reckoning probably for the last two months with Jesus. And you know how hard it is to, to look back, to go back and to say, what got me there? How did I get here? Because it's time to snoop around. It's time to interrogate your own self, not interrogating people, not sitting God at the table. And you, we sometimes interrogate God, and he doesn't mind, but sometimes it's like we go to God. It's like, where were you? Okay, here, in this crappy moment, moment, where were you? I need answers. When I was feeling hopeless, you were missing in action. When so-and-so did this to me, you didn't defend me. And so we're interrogating the wrong person. You know, you need to go back to your own self. And these are some questions that you should ask. How am I here now? Do you want to move forward? You need to know that. What happened? Have you ever asked that? What happened? You know, many times we only share our current position when it's good. I just want people to know that the, the face of Virginia, the one that preaches strong, right? Woohoo! I want people to know that Virginia, the praise, Shoro and praying in Jesus' name. I want, to, I want the Virginia that, that prophesies. 
I, I want to, I want that Virginia that looks good. It's always smiling. <laughs> right? Even if it's fake, you're like. <laughs> Do you know God doesn't want us to fake our lives? He's done. He wants us to live life and to taste life at its fullest. But you know that that takes bravery to do that? Jesus said that, as I said, that in this life we're going to have problems. Okay, so it's a given. So in other words, in this life, I'm going to tell you something. Write this down. Please, I want to see pants. I want to hear things. In this life, you're going to experience hurt. Okay? And it doesn't matter if you're ready or not. If you're going to live life, you're going to get hurt. Right? If you don't want to get hurt, then stay at home. Buy a hermit crab. <laughs> yeah. Buy a hermit crab. Don't talk to people. Hermits don't talk. They're easily to maintain. Why? Because I had to. You buy, you know how they say you buy pets according to your personality? For many years, all I had was hermit crabs. Because I didn't want to clean them, and they didn't want me to clean them. So I was like, do you want me to clean you? No, until we were both clean. So, yes. So hurt happens. And you know what? I don't have... I don't have, if I go to my origin, if I decide to look back, I, don't, I didn't have a choice many when I was little, many times when I was little. And I'm not saying go back so you can start like, oh, crap. Uh, yes, no, it's because of my parents. It's because so-and-so. That's not the point to going back to the origin. The point of going back is just to find out that God was there with you. The point that going back is that you will know that your God has never left you and he has never forsaken you. The point is that you find out that no, you didn't get there because you got a crappy, oh, okay, no, maybe not that. The point is that you didn't, you didn't get where you are because maybe your marriage is not, it's not going strong. Maybe you find yourself and you're like, what the heck happened? What the heck happened to, to my marriage, to my spouse, to my children, to my career, to my boss? And we don't like, we just like to put it on people. It's easy to put the blame on people. I want you to give you your finger. Get your finger and point it to your, um, to your neighbor and look at him and say, this is not about you. <laughs> and point your finger and say, it's about me. <laughs> it's about you. It's about you getting your ship together. Amen. You. Not trying to fix people. Because isn't it easy trying to fix other people? It's easy. It's so easy. So you don't have, you don't get to decide about being hurt. But I'm going to tell you what you get to decide. You get to decide if the only decision, if not the only decision, but is the decision that you get to make is what am I going to play? Maybe I didn't have a chance to own my ship before. Which I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is like, but I didn't have a chance to own my, my life before. I didn't get a chance to own my story. But you know what? Once you find out how you got here, you can own it. Don't give the power to no one and how you're, you're going to end up with your story. My story, I get to write my story. Maybe I didn't get to initiate it at the origin. But now, I can decide because I know the plans that God has for me and the purpose that he has, it is good. It is good. And you know, let me give you the last scriptures in Hebrews 12 too. It says this, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You know that Jesus is the author and finisher of your faith? Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God so the word of God that he says that he is the author and finisher of your faith 
I think we make a mistake by thinking that he's the author and finisher of your life. He's not the author and finisher of your life. We live in a fallen world. If he was the author and finisher of my life, I wouldn't, I would have never gone through what I went through. But he is the author and the finisher of my faith. And guess what author means in Greek? It means captain. Can you believe that he's the captain of your faith? He is the chief in command of your faith. See, we can do things in him. And the finisher means the perfecter. He, so he gets to perfect my life. You know what? I can make a decision here. I can look at this steps here and I can say, you know what? I have an author and finisher on my faith. And from here forward, I'm going to live my life in faith. And you know, I am the captain of my own ship. You are the captain of your own ship. Jesus is not the captain of your ship. He's the captain of your faith. And I think it's time for you to get your pen back and give Jesus writing privileges about your story. You're like, why is she preaching with pens? Because I want to make a point. Sometimes, Lord Jesus, you take the wheel and he's like, let me, give me, give me the pen. I want to write new chapters. I have an amazing plan for you. Okay, Jesus, I'm just going to lend it to you. And then we sometimes don't even give the pen. No, we have the right because you know what? I am the author of my own ship. Boy, you're going to sink down, my friend. You're going down. And he is around. I also write songs if you're interested. <laughs> I heard money is in writing. So you are the captain. You are the captain of your life. Jesus is the captain of your faith. So you get to choose. Are you going to give the power to someone else to finish your story? It's time for you to own your own ship. Own it. Own it. And you know what that means? You know how hard it is to own your own ship? I'm going to tell you why. I decided to own my own ship. And I'm going to tell you what it means. And I'm going to tell you that it's very painful. Because owning it means that you accept things that were not acceptable and they were not acceptable to God. So never think that God was okay with it. I'm just saying that this is a life and we live in a broken world where there is sin. And God is just there for you. But he never meant for you to get hurt. He never meant for you to go through all these awful things. So I'm just going to give you a little brief thing about my own ship and me coming to terms and owning my own story. Because that's what it is all about. Own your own story. I wasn't born in this country. I was born. You're like, oh, no wonder. <laughs> I was born. And this is the part that it gets hard. And you were given away. As an infant. You were not even given a name. Do you understand that? I was given a name until I was probably a month old. Most of my childhood, I was called Ed Esa, which means it's not even saying a girl. And have experienced every type of abuse that you can think of for many years. Many, many years. And to go back to that, and to accept it, not accept it that God left me, but accept it that it was what it was. And I'm not saying so you can have pity. Oh, poor, 
Virginia, no, I'm just saying it because if there is hope for me, there is hope for you. But you have to accept it. And then you, I cried a river unto God knowing that even when I came to Jesus, all I was looking is for somebody, someone, just someone to stand for me. Someone to fight for me. Someone to love me just as I was. Do you know what it is to, 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 to be in life having those thoughts? And then you come to Jesus and then, and then, and then religion said, hey, let go of your past. And good because I forgot it anyways. But let go of your past. Your past is gone. But no, if you don't deal with it, it would always stay there. And you want to come back and then you figure, you have to ask yourself, what am I always in patterns? I like, I fall for the same things. I do the same things. And, you, and your 2012 turns into 2013 and your 2013 into 2014 and so forth and so forth and so forth. But I'm going to tell you that you have to go back and you have to go back with Jesus. And you have to be in charge of your own self. And I want to tell you, I have cried, but I have accepted. But I also, in my acceptance of saying, you know what? Yes, this is what happened to me. Own your own story. This is what happened to me. But you know what? I have taken charge of my own pen, and my story is not going to finish that way. It's not going to finish that way. I get to write it. I get to speak because guess what? Faith is speaking those things that are not as though they are. And I have decided to, hey, relinquish my pen. You know how hard it is. That's trusting God when you decide to relinquish your pen. And stop writing your own stories. And then no matter what happened to you, no matter who hurt you, no matter who betrayed you. And I'm going to tell you, I have been hurt, betrayed, disappointed. Not only before Jesus, with Jesus. And you still get to see the people. And I'm not saying it so you, you put it on people. No, it's about you. May I have my back really quick and I'm closing with this. Because I want you to get this. This is you, my friend. <laughs> this is you. This is your other sheepies, your duckies, right? Your... And then when we say get your ship together, many times we're thinking about we're thinking about the other dogs behind you. Right? And we want to do live. Like get your ducks in a row. Who told you that? Where does that come from? I don't find it in the Bible. <laughs> but the time I'm trying to lie my ducks, this one already moved. You know, until I have my, my ducks in a row, I, I have fully complete wholeness. Then I'm going to share my, I'm going to own my own story. Then I'm going to do this for God. No, do it now. Now is the day. Now is the time. So, as you align yourself and you own your own story, your little duckies, whether it's your family, your business, you name it, blank for you, you they will get in alignment. We're trying to fix our kids. We're trying to fix other things. But we don't forget us. No, this is you. Own it. And these are my points. I've become a woman of points. Since when? I don't know. Let's put my points together. I'm going to close with this. We have it? Oh, I, I love it. Let me read you my points. So this is you. Gotcha. And this is you. Gotcha. Just hold them for me. These are my points. It's time to own to, it's time to own your own ship. Own your own story. No matter how pretty, how ugly it is. When you don't own your own ship, the ship will own you. When we deny and disengage from our hard emotions, they don't go away. Instead, they own us. Hurt happens to all of us without exception. However, the only decision that you and I get to make is what character, what role you and I are going to play in your life. 
you get to choose. So get your ship together and see God work miracles and see God work transformation in your life. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.